So welcome to grant training class number three. Um, today, our goal is to review several landowner permission forms that are needed to either establish new trails or to maintain existing trails on private and public land. Um, we're also going to uh, review some project permission forms, which are needed if you want to do construction on private or public land. And then uh, we're going to go over the landowner list form, which has been revamped this year. And this essentially is used to list all the different landowners that you have in your trail system. And it's required to be filed once a year with the Trails Bureau. Even if you are not excuse me, applying for grants, you need to um, send in this landowner list. And then finally, I'm going to review a grant management spreadsheet that you can use to manage RTP and GIA grants. And I think you'll find that to be really interesting. All right. So this is the first form I'm going to go over. So this is if you're a snowmobile club and you have a trail you can fill this form out uh, at the beginning here. It asks, is this a written or verbal permission? So what that means is if you have talked to a landowner and they're not really willing to sign any forms, but they're willing to give verbal permission to have a trail on their property, then you would check the verbal um, a button here um, and put this form in with the landowner information you don't have to have the landowner sign it. They prefer that you get written forms from all of your landowners. So I'm gonna show you what a written form would look like. Basically you've got um, uh, the club name up at the top here. Um, and then you've got a timeline here, indefinite one year or five years. I usually try and get my landowners to, to go five years or indefinite. If it's one year, you basically have to visit them every year and get a signed form. I do have some landowners that do that, but most of them are, are indefinite, meaning they give the permission, it's good until they revoke it. Um, but the date, and then in this case, it's uh, this trail is on state of New Hampshire land. So I've got the state of New Hampshire, their address in Concord and the contact telephone number. And then my district supervisor, who's the local contact, you know, that I would talk to about this land. And then down at the bottom here, they want to know where this trail is. If you have a road name, that's great. If not, use map and lot numbers. And also they want to want you to put the club trail name. In this case, it's card in 19A. Um, this is snowmobile club information. This is White Mountain Ridge Runners in Berlin, their address, their uh, club officer, title of the club officer, and then the club officer's signature. So if this is a written snowmobile trail permission form, you've got to have your club officer sign it, and then you've got to have your landowner sign it. Um, and then they want the officer's telephone number and email. So pretty straightforward form. Um, any questions on the snowmobile trail form? Okay. We're going to roll right into the OHRV trail permission form. Very similar. Um, you got to put your club name up at the top. They do not have a verbal or written option on this form. Um, so I don't know um, if they do allow verbal permissions for uh, ATV trails. I think that's something you need to ask the Trails Bureau if, you, if you're in that situation. But in my case, um, you know, all of the landowners are, are written for the uh, ATV trails that we have. So up at the top here, um, in this particular case, we allow ATVs, UTVs, which are side-by-sides and trail bikes. 
some of our trails allow trail bikes and some don't. So, you know, if I if I don't allow trail bikes, this would be clicked off. This trail bike would be clicked off. In this case, this this trail is in Jericho Park, and trail bikes are allowed this trail. Um, again, I've got a term here. It's indefinite, um, and then the ATV trails are open May through October. Up north, uh, like in Colebrook area, um, they may only be open May through September. They close a little bit earlier up north. So just, you know, check off those months that it's open in your area. Uh, put in the date, uh, then the landowner information. Again, this is state of New Hampshire using their Concord address, Concord phone number. And again, I've got my map information since this is this trail is not on a road. Uh, so for landowner signature, I I'll be using my um, District 1 supervisor, who's Clint Savage. He'd have to sign this form. And then the club in, in this area is the Androscoggin Valley ATV Club. They're in Berlin. This is the uh, president of the club, and he would have to sign this form. And then this is his uh, email address. So again, pretty straightforward form. Um, you've got to have these available, especially if you're doing a, a new trail, they're going to want to see these forms. Any questions on the OHRV trail permission form? Larry, if there's more than one uh, landowner listed on the property, do they both have to sign them if there's multiple or can it just be one person that's on it? You only need one. Okay. Any other questions on the OHRV form? 